club are good. What a production setup we have now. Dude, three weeks, three different studios. <laughs> <laughs> this feels pretty pro. It does feel pretty pro. I think we've gotten to a point now where it's um, it's pretty professional. It's starting to get there. No mics. No mics. <laughs> the magic of cinema. <laughs> it's pretty good. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous that nothing is going to work. I did test it all out, though, so I think we're pretty good. It does feel more like a normal conversation, though, without the thing though don't you think yeah that's true i did get very used to that though of course very used to that <laughs> <laughs> haven't we all <laughs> man what's been going on in the world uh how was the first week of being a non-corporate worker second week in fact yeah so what happened you i thought you were going to be put on gardening leave did they just go fuck it you're out of here yeah i'm on gardening leave right now oh so you're just getting I'm not working. I'm just uh, overseeing. Overseeing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, just just hanging out, seeing what the new position might be like. Exactly. Potentially just getting used to the people that I'm going to be potentially working with after my gardening leave is over. Checking out your options, perhaps. Yeah. But yeah. not work. Certainly Certain, not working. Definitely not working. No. <laughs> nah. It's um. I feel so much lighter, Scott. Honestly, I think it's probably one of the better decisions I've made, as long as um. It all goes smoothly because, you know, I work, I'll be working with friends. So yep. there is that potential um, headache to navigate because you don't want work to come between friendships. So, you know, you just got to be open and honest and be like, look, if there's anything that needs to be discussed, let's, let's get it out in the open and be upfront and honest with each other and let's not... Let work, you know, ruin potentially friendships, et cetera. It's better just to be clear from the beginning as to what the expectations are. I think so. But I also think that like you guys have had a friendship that has lasted this many years. You've been intertwined in each other's lives and you've both got a maturity to work. Whereas I feel like those mixing business and pleasure things can, you kind of know going in yeah. that there's like a risk of that. Um, but he's obviously super organized and that business is successful. You've been successful in your own pursuits. So it's like a coming together. Yeah. And it thing. certainly feels like we're both working towards a common goal. You know, we've both got the same, um, same aspirations for the business in mind. That's sick. And you just get to be around sick cars all the time. Yeah. Just sick cars. And some fucking terribly shit ones too, but oh really? Of course, you know. There's mine's, always mine's not been in there for a while. There's always that aspect of things. Um, for every awesome one you get, you get ten shitters. But um, it is what it is. Like I had a guy come in. It's like it. It was at the end of the day, and um, trying to pay with um, afterpay, like zip pay. It's like, bro, if you can't afford to maintain your Mercedes. Maybe don't buy one. Um, afterpay kind of rule. Just set up afterpay for them. It's because you get paid up front. Well, see, we don't mind taking it, but the problem was it was at like four thirty when we're meant to be shutting up shop. There's four people waiting to take their cars, and this dude's like, "Oh, I need you to scan my barcode for my zip pay," and it's like, "Cunt, this isn't Maya. I don't have a scanner." It's like. I was reading, trying to Google how to take the payment because... Okay. Just set up online payments. Yeah. And then just make them do it on the website in yeah. front of you. You just yeah. set it up through zero or whatever the business is set up yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. good. I've got that all set up for... There, there is business. a normal way to do it. Um, it's just uh, you get like a... you get a No, it, it, it populates into your Apple wallet and you can just scan it like a credit card. But he had two fucking accounts set up. Yeah, like, <laughs> one bro, I don't it, need this. One only had a small amount of money on it, the other one had a bigger amount on it, he couldn't work out how to do it, and I was getting flustered, and I was like, fucking just go down. When people do that shit, I see it all the time where people <laughs> go through and go like, all right, can you put 20 on this card and 40 yeah. on this card? It's like, can you organize your fucking finances, please? Correct. So I had to do that. I had to do multiple transactions. and. This well, dude's... you got customer facing business, it's going to be fucking shit. I, I... <laughs> it's not all the time, but there's going to be people where you're like, oh yeah, people are morons. I 100%. forgot. And I'm not, I'm not here like complaining, like, oh, life's hard. It's just like, that's one challenge that I had to face, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that's just, it's just new things that you wouldn't have had to deal with. Correct. At yeah, all. Correct. 
I have um, it with mine where it's tough, where I, I take deposits and deposits are good, but then the final, the bigger the job, <clears throat> the final payment dr drags out. Yeah. Because people will be like, you give them all the stuff and then you're like, all right, that's done. And then they're like, oh, well, we haven't decided on this thing yet. Like I've had a couple where I'll do packages for bet for like artists and it'll be like an album and three singles and you'll do the album and like two of the singles and then they'll delay on what single they're going to do. And suddenly it's like seven months and you're like, yo, I need to take the other half of this payment. Mm. And it's like, oh, you haven't done the other single. It's like, that's yeah, you, that's dog. kind of on you. Like you're going to have to trust me on that, that mm. I'm going to do it. Mm. Like I've not really let you down before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you're not a large design house. Yeah. Um, it's like just you. <laughs> well, me and Ben are talking about potentially, we've got a bit of an issue at the moment. We've mm. got a, an issue. They're trying to take this. They're trying to, well, they're not trying to take it from me. I, I feel like they might be. Isn't, I thought that was rectified. Uh, they, I don't know if I've implicated okay. in that sense. Right. So yeah, we signed the, the lease and then we signed the next lease and they kind of fucking screwed us over on a term on the lease that mm. I somehow missed. Um, so now I'm at the mercy of basically what they want to charge me. Right. And I had them over a barrel for COVID. Yes. And now I feel the barrel on my chest. <laughs> and I'm waiting <laughs> to see what Will the, the landlord's fist yeah. come lubed or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm chasing them up. Because I was trying to not sound too desperate. For sure. But then I'm like, yo, tell me what's going on. Mm. And they're like, oh, we're waiting to hear back from the owner. It's like, no, you're not. You're sweating me until this lease is over to the day. And then you can fucking have a lot more leverage. That's what they do. That's their job though. So for me, I'm like, I was talking to the guys in here about it. They're like, that's a dog move. And I'm like, it's business. These aren't our friends. That's right. Their yeah. job is to get as much as they can for their client. And my job is to get the best deal for me and the people that are in here. Mm. As soon as you remove the personal side of that, it's like, there is no relationship. I talk to them if I need something, they talk to me if they need something. We're mechanical. Yeah, There's no emotion in this decision. So I'm, immediately I was like, I felt the emotional push of like, how can they do this? This mm. is, and then I was like, oh, their job is to try and mm. fuck me over. And my job is to try and not let them. Mm. and fuck them over where I can. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, man. It just seems like the more and more I progress in my career, the more I realize that it was, we were kind of saying this on the Patreon last week, the more I realize that doing the work is the lowest way to make money. It's like being the actual like person that's, that sits there and does it all. The people that are making money are the ones that are like putting people together, getting on the phone, you know, like, cause there's a glass ceiling to the amount of work I can do personally. And there's burnout and things like that. And I've experienced it. So I know that I could just take on everything, but I'm just going to suffer for it. And when I suffer for it, I do dumb things. Like I need to just take two months off and go on holiday, or I want to try and find some sort of career balance where there's enough money coming in. And I've got like a, a relatively smooth ride. Mm. And I think I should be able to achieve that. But it just feels like at the moment, it's the seas are a little rough. So mm. I just need to navigate this and then look at how I can make sure that I've got like a good fucking buoyant seaworthy vessel moving forward. Have you ever considered like growth and bringing someone on? Because obviously there's a, there's a degree of, um, I suppose, giving up some creative control when you have someone else on because they might not necessarily be as good as you and the product might not be as good as what you would put out. Um, do you have apprehension towards that? I have done in the past and I've had people come in and stuff like that, but it's pretty tough because even though I run technically a design studio, the majority of my work comes in to me and it's people that I have some form of relationship with or people that come from someone else that has a relationship with me. So they're expecting me to do the work. Right. So I want to basically move myself into a position where I'm doing more creative direction. So I'm coming up with the concept and that is a little bit of a tough 
thing to navigate because a lot of my process is comes about in doing the work. So I'm kind of like, I'm, I never go, you right, don't know this what it's going to look like before you start. I know. I, mm. I set some Are parameters, sure? but it's a lot of it is like intuitive. It's already within me. So I need to kind of look at processes that I can sort of streamline those processes and then brief someone really clearly. But for me, when by the, if I can get to that point where I'm briefing someone really clearly, I can do it a lot quicker than they can. So my perception of it has always been, all right, well, I can bring people in I'm gonna to have to teach them, teach them, teach them, teach them to get them to a point. I've had this before where I've had people in and I'll get them doing bits and pieces, but then I end up kind of doing it properly in front of them to teach them. So I think that there is like a good year, year and a half investment in actually having less time, paying someone money, so having less money, doing more work, and then you have them at a point. And by that point, they're like, Ah, I could technically do this myself. Hmm. So you're kind of building competition. So a lot of that stuff, I'm like, it's easier just to charge a premium rate, which I do for me, which you can do as a creative, you know what I mean? And just kind of do the work and accept that it's kind of capped at a certain amount of time versus income thing. Hmm. But now that I've got Ben in here that I taught how to design and he's on a hugely, a very high level now, and he's bringing in a lot of work and I'm bringing in a lot of work. And a lot of the time we're kind of just like, okay, well, let's just pull the work and do it together. And I know that he, we, we kind of worked on a project recently where it was a branding job and he was like, do a couple of concepts. I'll do a couple of concepts and then we'll link. And we showed each other the concepts and two of them were almost identical. So hmm. it was like, oh, okay, well, we're actually the same. Hmm. That's brilliant. Because that's what you actually, I think every business people are looking for some able to like, if I could duplicate myself. Mm -hmm. But what I think I would really benefit from is like a studio manager, someone that handles like Chase's work, does all the invoicing and dictates my diary. So they go, okay, well, this is due to this week. We need to do this. We need to do that. And kind of has, I'll still have some contact with the client, but for the most part, I will be working for that person and they'll be managing it all. Um, because you can't do it all, dude. Mm, you can no. in the beginning and you have to in the beginning, but you can't. Like you see it with um, with the place that you're working now. Like the place there's you're only hanging out now. The place you're hanging out now, <laughs> potentially working at in the future <laughs> and not at all taking fucking payments on a Friday afternoon. Um, you, he can get that shit working to a really good point, but he re you realize there's a ceiling. It's like, if I want to expand this business, I need to bring someone in that I trust that can do that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting quandary, isn't it? It's cool though. I think the biggest thing that I notice is that stress is the enemy. Like, so the way that you deal with stress is the quicker and better that you can figure out how to deal with stress, the better, because it doesn't actually, it's not really real you get stressed by like money or you get stressed by like timelines and stuff like that. And that kind of freezes you. And in that frozen thing, you're not actually productive in any way. So like I try and look at it now where I've been through enough stuff in my career and my life where I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to die. So in a year, nothing that is happening to me right now is really going to fucking matter. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm back level. Try not to take, because when I was younger, I would just take everything so fucking seriously. And now I'm like, eh, it's not really the fucking end of the world. Very true. Yeah. <clears throat> it is tough though. It's, I think running, I think a lot of people in Australia, especially in WA, like run their own businesses and you kind of run a small business until you're at a point that that business can be a large business and trying to figure out how to go from just like a DIY person to actually having something where you go, okay, well, I've got stable income. I've got a professional thing. Cause in the beginning, especially in WA, you can really just be a personable person and kind of do the job directly. And then they don't have to go to like bigger studios yeah. or bigger companies. Yeah. The growth, that first step of growth seems to be the hardest, I think. Well, from what I've experienced in, you know, people's businesses that are similar. 
um, you know, like Ollie and in his uh, detailing, sort of similar to yours in yep. a degree because he, like you, expects a certain output and that output is derived from him and his experience. To be able to take time off to, to coach someone and make mistakes and yada, 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 you know, you have to take that dip yep. and people are unwilling to do it and almost then, hap not happy, but settle for the status quo, mm -hmm. which is really going backwards. If you're, not, if you're not growing, you're going backwards, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think you fight for that stability to be like, I don't, you know, my job is me. And then it's very hard to let someone else in on that mm. because you're like, well, I, I can't control everything. Yeah, yeah. And control seems to be the biggest reoccurring factor. I think for everyone I know, it's like control, you know, in relationships, in fucking friendships, in finances, in business. It's like, as soon as people start to feel any lack of control, they go, they start to wig out a little bit For and like sure. go quite insular. Yeah. So that's probably a learning curve that I'm going through to some degree. Mm -hmm. But I hope I can hold on to this place because I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, worst case, we can set up the studio in my um, in my lounge room, but this does have a much nicer aesthetic. That's it. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, the thing that I do in here that doesn't bring me any money and takes up tons of time is the least of my concern. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not, it's not no money. <laughs> it's some, <laughs> albeit very time, small. Yeah, time to income is insane. <laughs> ROI, very <laughs> low. <laughs> very, very low. <laughs> but, you know, we do get something out of this for us, I feel. 100%. You know? <laughs> I, love it. I love doing it. I've accepted it as part of my life. I am. Um, with it. I cursed your fucking name last week though. Well, I nearly cursed your name. You nearly sunk my battleship. <laughs> what did I do? I got promoted to Blue Belt during the week. Last oh, week. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Some um, would say that maybe was potentially from the words of uh, encouragement that I've been giving on the podcast. Let's just say that, um, that it was the complete opposite, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing night. Like, I won't talk about it here. I'll talk about it on the Patreon as to what actually happened that night. But um, uh, it, it was funny. So Rod sent me a text message during the day and said... Um, heads up, I'm giving both AJ and Steph their purple and brown belts tonight if you want to come down and be part of it because, you know, it's a big thing. Um, he will usually invite the people who are friends with the people's getting, uh, people getting graded. Um, come down. And I never train Tuesdays, but for whatever reason, I was like, fuck, I'm going to train Tuesday night. I already had my gi in the car. So I was like, sick, I'll be there. So roll down and... Um, the, the boys are getting suspicious because Marco Ponos is there in the gi. And that, I've seen Marco Ponos in the gi once and it was for Christmas when I first joined and someone got graded. That's the only time you ever see it. Um, similarly, when Jack Becker turns up in the gi, you know, something's fucking iffy. Um, so the boys were cottoning on that something was going on and Rod starts the class by saying, look, um, obviously this is quite weird. We've got Marco. A um, couple of guys are getting their, uh, their new belts tonight. There's going to be a couple of promotions. And he goes, this first guy um, nearly didn't get this tonight because I heard him talking about it on a podcast. And I was like, fuck, that's me. <laughs> um, so it's kind of an unwritten rule, uh, especially in our gym, but in most uh, good gyms that you don't talk about gradings. If mm. you talk about a belt, you get another six months. That's yeah, just how yeah. it works. And uh, and you, uh, your comment was something like, why haven't you got, why hasn't Josh got his blue belt yet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Rod heard it. Yeah, and which is sick, because I control Rod. <laughs> I control Rod, no problem. Like, not control, I can troll Rod, oh, yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because Rod is a friend of mine. He's not, <laughs> he's not a, a position of power to me because I'm not in the thing. Yeah. So I'm, that's me kind of fucking with him and you, because I can say, because I know it makes you uncomfortable because yeah, you like, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> But 
I know he can read between the lines. He did. Um, yeah, he spoke to Marco as well. And they were like, look, it wasn't Josh talking about it. It was Scott. And um, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not going to get a blue belt anytime soon. No, nah, definitely not. <laughs> or at least another six months onto, uh, onto your time. But um, yeah, uh, I, I said to him as he was putting my belt on, I was like, when you said that, I was like going to message him after the podcast and be like, look, there was some discussions, <laughs> nothing to do with me. <laughs> um, and he laughed and I laughed and it was a great time all around. But it was really nice to share that experience with Steph and AJ, who are two really good friends mm -hmm. of mine. Um, and, you know, Steph getting his brown belt especially, like that's such a huge achievement. Um, so really, really nice to, to share that night, um, despite how fucking ludicrously difficult than I was. So talk me through it. What's the, oh, do you want to do it on the Patreon? <clears throat> yeah, look, um, I'll, I'll, essentially there's a, um, you know, there's, there's a tradition when it comes to getting belts that most people that know jujitsu will understand. And, and, you know, sometimes it happens depending on who the people are that's getting graded. Um, so, you know, that happened and then after that, we basically went into one and a half hours of straight rolling. So, um, and Rod gave everyone explicit instructions to fucking murder us three. So we would roll for seven minutes and then immediately the next person, like everyone else would rest and either the next person would just jump straight on you, like getting shark tanked, or we'd have to do squats or burpees or push-ups or at one point I was running laps of the mat carrying Sanjay on my back. Um, and then at the end we were just like, he just made us sprint around the mats until he decided we'd had enough. <laughs> Jesus. So it was, through the ringer. in terms of like physical exertion, it was the hardest night of jiu-jitsu I've ever done in my life. The hardest night of physical uh, activity I've ever done in my life, hands down. But at the end of it, like it was so cool because all your teammates are like, you, your close teammates are there and everyone's really encouraging and like cheering you to keep fucking going even though it's super hard. I had Luke who's on me, he was a big blue belt and he fucking put it on me like he'd never put it on me before and I was making noises that I've never made before. <laughs> and there was like this weird feeling. I was almost like, it was almost like emotional, like I almost wanted to like fucking cry or something but you've been pushed to that limit yeah like i f we fucking found that that limit i didn't go over but i found it and i was able to kind of just keep keep going but it was fucking hard and um i think just so jacked up on adrenaline i didn't sleep i tried to go to bed like 10 30 i was like three o'clock in the morning i'm still fucking lying there for my uh you open. sent me the photo dude i was so genuinely stoked that's congrats man that's Thank a fucking you. it's an achievement and it's like earned yeah. And I don't think there's that many things these days that are like truly earned like that. 100%. Yeah, I did the maths. It's like two years, nine months, I think, since my very first class. And based on an average of X amount of hours a week, it's over 450 hours. You've just been putting it in. Yeah. Um, and like I said on the podcast, there's something special about being a Rod Costa blue belt, you know, Rod Costa anything belt. Um, he takes that shit seriously, so super, super excited to get it from him and um, yeah, super excited to keep training. Because now, you know, once you, people get their blue belt, there's that thing where they just quit. Um, done, it, that. done it now. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, no not, that's not happening. No, nah, keep murdering. That physical exertion thing is, is funny. I had that when we were doing S30. They like, the, the point of what they were doing there was like, to push people to their limits and that like weird emotional limit where we were doing like just insane numbers of burpees over and over again. And like on the on the bike, trying to get a hundred calories between two of you. Yeah. And like racing on it and you've got everyone being like, come on, come on, come on. And it's like you're competing against each other. And you hear that point where you just like, it's almost madness. Yeah. You're like, I I'm so exhausted. And then you're like, I need to stop, but there's so many people. You're like, I you can't. can't fucking stop. Yeah. And then at the end of it, you just lay out on the floor and you're just a fucking, you know, you're just a puddle. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I, I can do it. You can do it. You know, yeah. like you yeah. can go so much further than your quitting point. Yes. And that's cool because there's not that many times, I don't think that you get pushed to, to that limit. 
No, it's not something you can do by yourself, I don't think. Well, I think some people probably well, can. I think when that starts to get drilled into you, yeah, that's what separates people. And it's like, I think people get addicted to that. Yeah. It's like, if I'm not going there, then I'm not really doing it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think hard to get through by yourself. Um, but uh, getting pushed there is is cool. Because like you said, it, it, it shows you that you do have another 10%. Yeah. Over what you have or more, you know, potentially. Um, yeah, I was fucked. I've never been that tired in my life. <laughs> Were you mad sore afterwards? Mad sore, bro. And, you know, the whole first bit, bleeding and <laughs> sore. <laughs> yeah, for real. Oh, that's fucking awesome, man. It must feel nice, yeah, just to... Because that's... It's so extra on life. It's like, you know, you choose to do something hard. And there's no half ways with it. There's no, like, I got mad respect for Rod and the way that he does those things. Obviously, I'm fucking with him all the time mm. through the podcast because I know he listens. But I <laughs> fucking love him. <laughs> He's the fucking best. And also because all of my friends are involved in this thing and they all take it so seriously, it's fun. Yeah. It's to make fun of them for that. For <laughs> sure. That's a fun thing to do. For sure. I understand it. Um, I was gonna say something there, and I fucking lost my lost my train of thought. But yeah, that was that was uh, a great night. And oh, that's what I was gonna say. Um, like the next time I trained, that was on Tuesday night. The next time I trained was on a Thursday night, and I had this weird sense of almost imposter syndrome. Mate, eh? it wasn't that I thought I didn't deserve the belt. It was more that I just felt like I was real shit, and I don't know why. I felt better on Saturday rolling. I felt confident and fine. But um, yeah, just immediately after, I was just kind of in a bit of a daze, I think. I don't know. I think it will just take a little bit of getting used to. Because now, like, in some ways, you're over a hump. And in other ways, you're bottom of the food chain again. 100%, yeah. And it's like, there's expectation on you now to carry yourself in a certain way, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, when you're rolling and stuff, it's like, you, I think you probably can get away with a lot as a white belt. Where it's like, oh, he's still learning. And mm. it's like, what are you fucking doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your shit together. You certainly don't want to be getting continually tapped by white belts, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that'd be the thing, right? There's a fucking squad of them hunting my ass down now. <laughs> I, I see their little no bead, <laughs> beady eyes from the side of the mat. It's like looking for me. I'm hiding in the corner. <laughs> Rod's cousin Gustavo is fucking out for my blood, I can tell. What belt is he? He's still got his white belt. Yeah. He started a year after me, though, so I think, and the fact that he's Rod's cousin, he'll probably have to do another nine or eight years yeah. before <laughs> Rod will promote him. <laughs> oh, that's fucking fantastic, man. Yeah, super stoked. So that was, that was, um, that was last week. Oh, was this, was this week? What's the day today? It's Sunday. It was, yeah, it was Tuesday just gone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I got the message from you, and I was like, it was funny because I was going to say to you, like, it's definitely because I said it on the podcast. <laughs> Quite the opposite. <laughs> well, well, fucking Delby messaged me straight away. He's like, that was probably because of my words of encouragement. <laughs> Everyone wants to take some fucking, uh, has a part to play in such things. Oh, Delby was like, no. Nah, um, and here I was telling everyone how shit you were, basically. <laughs> no, it's that was shit. a good pod last week. I enjoyed it. It was good to have a good laugh with the boys. For you know? sure, yeah. And like they said, we haven't had Yoni, Adam, you and myself in the same room probably since Canvas potentially. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. That is fucking wild. No, it was good, man. I, I fully reconnected with Delby on that trip when he was back. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've spent time together since he's left, but there's been, it just, I don't know, they, they just felt like a little bit of it. You, you kind of, when you see someone every day and you have so much in common and such common goals, and then you, and then that stops. It's hard to find where you fit in with each other, mm. and that's. I found that with a with a few friends. Obviously, when we were doing the club scene, it was just like by circumstance we were together all the time. And then even with me and you, where it's like you'd kind of see each other all the time. And then when that isn't there anymore, you need to f find a reason. find a reason. Yeah, and it's and everyone gets busy, and it's like all of us have ish, have trouble switching off and just i'm not someone that's like let's just go to the pub for a beer sort of thing <laughs> yeah. so we start a podcast but i think um 
yeah, it was it was sick. I ended up on the Friday night. I got a message from Delby saying he it's I spoke to him that day, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm in town. I'll be around your way tonight. Like, let's link up." And we ended up just sitting and talking for like three and a half hours, yeah, and just like I was like, "Oh shit, I fucking miss this person so mm-hmm. much." Mm-hmm. Um, cause it feels kind of alienating when you see someone that you know so well and you're not kind of bonding where you're just like kind of having that, what's been going on, how are you, you know, you Service talk level. about other people and stuff yeah. and you're like, oh, we, it's hard to not be like, we used to be so much more than this. And like, we've kind of drifted apart, but then to see that that sort of common underlying thing that that you realize like oh fuck i know you the core of you Mm. and that's a fucking really cool thing yeah because i don't feel like friendships get until friendships are a kind of hard work it's hard to know how strong they are you know and when you need to actually fucking show up for things and work at it yeah it's like that's not something that is it's certainly not something that i was used to yeah and then it's nice to see yeah a little a spark of things and go oh yeah this is actually fully worth i think when it gets hard people can often just be like ah fuck it um just let it drift fully that things do come back though i've had that it's nice, you know, you have those friendships with people where you don't need to see them regularly. And then when you do see each other, it's just like, <clears throat> it just takes off. You just pick up where you left off. Yeah. That's, that's the shit. And it's, that's, I notice that as I get older, that like certain ones drift away mm. and certain ones, you kind of stay, yeah. you stay in it, you know? Have you ever found yourself in a position where there is something extremely heavy to pick up and you do not have the physical attributes to be able to manage it? I have. I know Scott has. And if you find yourself in a similar predicament, you should reach out to Jackson Moore at Perth Fork Trucks. These boys have been servicing the Perth Fork Trucking industry for over a decade? Maybe more. I don't know. It's been a long time. We don't have that information. They are experts, though. You can guarantee that. Go to perthforktrucks.com.au. The link is going to be down in the description below or reach out to Jackson Moore. So, look, I wanted to get your, what the fuck? Oh, no. I've broken my new seat already. Yeah. The buttons are coming off. That's why I fake Eames is. (sighs) I fake Eames is. You know what, though? They're fucking expensive for fake fucking chairs. Yeah, they really are. I don't know how that's occurred. You got to wear yours in. This one's had a lot of fucking... Sit, bum time. Oh yeah. I wanted to get your um, your thoughts. I don't know if you've uh, looked into this or, or seen much of it, but it is in the vein of your conspiracy um, fucking enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> Scott rubs his hands together uh, menacingly for those listening. Um, so you remember when Rothschild died, like a couple of weeks ago? Yep. Did you see the thing with the horses? I heard about it. I didn't see it. it took right, me so there's it. two black horses and a white horse and they were parading past like some, they, they do it all the time, but it's usually only two horses, the black ones. And then there was the white one, but the royal standard was sheathed. It had a black covering over it. It's usually unfurled. And the conspiracy people were like, the king is dead. Because that's usually what happens when the king dies. Mm-hmm. The white horse comes out and they cover up the standard. But the king was alive. Prince Charles. King Charles. But Rothschild had just died. So there was that. Then we've got Prince Charles, prostate cancer. Right? Oh, has he? Yeah, yeah. He's, um, I reckon he's going to be dead soon. Right. And now we've got Kate with cancer. Yeah. And then we've got William. Dad dying, William potentially the new king, the new queen with cancer, and the horses. What's going on, Scott? I don't, I, I think that the, the Kate Middleton one was weird because it was like, it was a kind of a sobering thing where 
there was all the photos. It's like, she photoshopped this photo. She's actually dead. She hasn't been seen in public and all this. <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, hey, actually, she got fucking cancer. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, and but like, here's Whoa. the thing, Scott. What's the one thing you can say that no one will ever come back with? Mm. She's got cancer. You don't, you don't be like, yeah, right. You be got to be like, oh, no, I'm so sorry for her. Yeah. It's a good diversionary tactic. A diversion from what though? Because exactly. I think you're saying, Scott, you're saying that like, is the what's question. Going on? <laughs> that I don't is know. I think it's not like a big secret that Rothschild would have probably been the true king, the one pulling the strings to the marionettes. Um, I do think, I don't know, to me, it's like the King Charles thing. It's like no one fucking, no one respects it. <laughs> you don't think he is the true king? Nah, I don't think anyone's giving him. The props? Yeah, and I think he's going to, if he's got prostate cancer, that's rough. But that's not going to, that's not going to end well. Imagine being the doctor who has to put their finger up the king's rump. No joke. The royal buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the pressure. I... What if he came? <laughs> I think that's everyone's fear. I haven't had to have a prostate exam yet. No, but you're... um. I'm, Thankfully, you'll get there before me, so you can let me know. Yeah, what to I can. I can tell you how to. Are you jerking off before you go, like just in case? Oh God, <laughs> I've heard it. Did, yeah, I've heard that that is like it can happen. It's a button. Yeah, it's if an a man makes me come, button. I'm fucking jumping off a bridge, eh? <laughs> 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 yeah, I wonder what's going. Well, I wonder who took over from Rothschild. One of the other Rothschilds, probably. Yeah. He did well to stay in the shadows. Yeah. We never really knew too much about him. No. It was just like, you kind of hear it through conspiracy theories and Illuminati and shit like that, but I don't know. That one's one that I'm like, who fucking knows? The, the thing with the horses should be easy to research though, right? Yeah, I would assume so. I didn't. I don't know about like the royalty. I know that there's a lot of things like that that yeah. they kind of do, but... Yeah, I wish I had more for that because it's not something that I'm well versed in at all. I just kind of saw that it happened and I was like, okay, well, that's fine. That guy's gone. We'll have to circle back on it at a later point once you've had a chance to go down one of your deep ADHD rabbit, rabbit holes. holes on <laughs> I have a new one though, which is pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. So the um, our law correspondent, where's my phone? Uh, it might be over there. I remember seeing it. Here it is. Oh. I'll see if our law correspondent has got back to us. Who's our law correspondent? One, uh, Sir uh, William Chan. Corey White. Oh. Ooh, he does not have oh, time yeah. today to... Nate Flog. Nate Flog. But he did oh. post this thing. My so aims he... is fucking melting down, bros. <laughs> he has gone back to the... The cloth, the so cloth, to speak. yeah. Yes. Um, I think that's priesthood, isn't it? I don't yeah. know whether that's lawyer. So he posted something on his story yesterday, uh, the day before, and it is. I'll just read it out. It's a, it's a page from a, a law that they're trying to pass, and um, so it's not yet passed. It's been put forth, and. It's not yet past the Senate, so it's been put forth to the Senate. It is about vapes. Whenever you say Senate to it, just I just get the vision of Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they st do they still wear powdered wigs and stuff and in, I don't in know. Australia. I know the QCs do. Yeah, you've been to like the House of Commons and then in um there's there's like a one for WA Parliament here. I've not been, no. Uh, there's like a big gavel and like... All right. Yeah, it's all pretty gay. I did go to the Freemasons. Um, to be one, see one. The Stonecutters. We do. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember the song. <laughs> all right, so the thing here was basically they've put forth a law, which looks like it's going to be quietly passed as everything is, that says that if, per if a person possesses a quantity of a kind of vaping good in Australia, the penalty that they're seeking is 12 months imprisonment or a $500 or 500 penalty units or both. So they 
And I said to him, I was like, does that mean that they're going to be able to charge anyone using a vape? So it says less than a commercial quantity. Mm. So it's like a person. Mm. So me having this, they're going to be able to fine you $500 for having this. So one penalty unit is a dollar. I would assume so. That's why I wanted to get some right. answers from him. I think the 12 months imprisonment is probably just something that they've got there. So they're like, pay you fine. For sure. Um, I can't find much about it on the internet, but he's obviously read through this stuff. Um, so basically, I had said on this podcast a while ago, I couldn't understand why they weren't going after the shops for selling vapes. Yeah. And everyone was getting hooked on vapes. And I was like, maybe because they're not taxing it, they're going to take them away and then everyone's going to have to smoke cigarettes. They're going to make a bunch of money. But it seems like they've dragged that shit out to the point where everyone's addicted to these things and then they're going to start fucking fining everyone 500 bucks because they've started fining people. I don't know if you know this, but if you walk through like Forest Chase mm -hmm. or Beaufort Street or anywhere and you're, you're seeing vaping, to, right? they, can, they can hit you with a fine. Yeah, right. And I had a guy try and do it to me before a podcast recently yeah. and it was like security guard. Oh, and he was like, oi, oi, come here. And I was like, fuck yourself. No. <laughs> and he didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I kept rolling. So it's like, they're going to be, basically, it sounds like they're going to just find another way to fucking take money off people. A penalty unit is a measurement used to determine the amount of a fine for an offense. The value of the unit is multiplied by the number of units set for the offense by the legislation. What does that even mean? It sounds like $500. Yeah, possibly. So keep an eye on that. Like, I don't know what we can do. No, to... see, the state sets rates for units depending on the legislation under which the offense falls. So for road offenses, one unit is $50. But for other offenses, it can be up to $163. To change the unit value, each act in which a penalty unit is set must be amended by parliament. So 500 units could be $50,000, you don't know. Well, from looking into it today, apparently on January 1st, they made it like fully illegal for them to sell them. Yeah, right. Like January 1st this year. Yeah. And everyone's still, everyone's still selling them. 100%. And my theory on that is that they're just like, fuck it. I don't think they can find us as much as we're making. Yeah. And they've obviously gone after the suppliers because the supply chain has fucking gone down, but the price of them has gone up. So this now, these are 40 bucks across the board, up from 30, okay. which they were like two weeks ago. They also can't, they can't bust you if it's not in plain sight, I believe. So the way that they were getting around it, I heard was, you know, the, the vapes are never out. Yeah. So the ones that are advertised on the thing, oh, they don't have any nicotine in them. But then when they go out the back and get them, they give them to you. But you have, you have to have a warrant to be able to go out and get the back out the back. Yeah, right. So that's how they're it's getting so it. It's so fucking obvious, though. It's so like The menu's there. Correct. But I suppose the menu never says a nicotine, nicotine no. amount on no, it. No, it doesn't. And I know that they don't sell nicotine-free ones. <laughs> yeah. Because I asked them. I was that, like, yo. That's for pussies. <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe I can just start banging on one of those. Mm. It's going to help me wean off this. Because mm. I want free of this gay shit. Yeah. I truly want free of it. I've done a month. It's a month today without weed. Okay. Which is, every time I do it, I'm just like, yeah, life is just a bit fucking less fun. My mind is not as switched on. Like genuinely, like I know it's a good thing to kind of cycle off now and then. And people do it with drinking. Mm. And it's probably one of my main vices. So I'm like, like I said, like I want to maybe just get a grip of life a little bit more as opposed to going let's just deal with this tomorrow mm. but yeah life's a little bit dull for me it's sleep dude i'm sleeping horribly well i just got a script from my dexy dispensary doctor for they gave me ultra mag which is like a super strong magnesium mm -hmm. which i think you can just buy over the counter um and then I got melatonin in a liquid form, which is comp compounded. So oh, they have okay, to make yeah. it. Um, and he'd given me another drug as like a three-part cocktail. And I went to get it on Wednesday. And the woman really like haphazardly was just like, 
Oh, uh, yep. So this is the magnesium. This is when you take this. This is the melatonin. And then the other one was like a pharmaceutical. And she gave me the sheet. Um, and like I said, like I'd taken those SSRIs that time and they kind of fucked with me. So I was like, I don't really like taking um, pharmaceutical drugs in particular. Like I just don't really like taking them if I don't need to. You know, like most of the time you have like a chest infection and they're like, take this for mm. three weeks and it will go away. It's like, if you don't think a fucking chest infection is going away in three weeks by itself. Mm. Um, and I read through it and it's like thinning of hair, fucking mania, like loss of sex drive, erection stuff. problems and stuff. And I was like, I said to her, I was like, yeah, that's cool. I'm, don't, I don't want this one. And she goes, oh, was it something I said? I said, no, I read the thing she goes oh none of those things are gonna happen and i was like i don't want it <laughs> stop trying to give me and then and the other thing it said is it goes you can't you need to wean off it like you can't just stop taking it right and i was like you guys trying to fucking yeah, get me hooked shit. on some shit it's like no nah. but i've been taking the melatonin like a late really yeah it's beautiful Excellent. so and i've been sleeping it's been insane. I've just been sleeping fucking beautifully. And that never, ever, ever happens to me. Like, you know, falling asleep at like 11, waking up at like seven. I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself. And then because I'm back on like a reasonable time. Wait, you're going to sleep at 11, waking up at seven. Mm -hmm. That's eight hours of sleep. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. Oh, so you're saying that's happening now? Yeah. Oh, I've like right. literally I thought, never I thought you were had complaining that. about that. I was like, nah, what the fuck dude. is wrong with you? No, nah, it's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been really, really good. So, and then a couple of nights I haven't even had to take it because I think because I'm my body clock's finally on something good, it's like I get tired, I go to sleep. So that's, if I can, yeah, if I can fucking figure that shit out, I think my life is going to be exponentially better. It's fucking three quarters of the battle, mate. Yeah, for real. Um, one thing is how do we manage time on this? How do you, how do you tell? I actually have no concept because I thought we could do it on the camera. Yeah. I think we can on that camera. Hang on. Come on, buddy. Come on, little buddy. Oh, this one we can. So it's 40, we're at 40. Okay, cool. Um, did you see, um, it was all over sort of Twitter yesterday, uh, the Russian concert attack. Yeah, that was crazy. Fucking wild, eh? Yeah, it was crazy. Is that's not the first time that's happened. Do you remember years and years ago, there was another one like at the Russian theater and they burnt the theater down. I don't remember that like one. Like it was another terrorist attack in Russia. I just remember that from years ago. I thought you were about to say there was another one and it was in an airport and I was like, Scott, that was Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually played that. That was years ago. No man's something was that mission called. I remember doing it and being like, "This is this is this can't be the right thing to do." <laughs> I failed the mission first time because I didn't shoot. <laughs> weren't you embedded in the? With yeah, the terrorists? yeah, yeah. But you yeah, were fully yeah. killing people. Yeah, it's like mowing them down. That was not good. Um, yeah, the Russian one is pretty crazy because they caught the guys. Yeah. And it's ISIS who didn't look very haven't been around for a while. They're like, oh yeah, I just got a telegram message and I just got to shooting. And everyone's like, Putin's gonna put it on uh on Ukraine. And it's like as as like a provocation. It's like, look, I don't think Putin needs provocation for Ukraine. They're at war. Yeah. It's not like he's gonna go, oh, I'm gonna invade you now. It's mm. like they've been fucking doing it. So I don't know. It just is, Twitter's Twitter's on my fucking nerves at the moment because it just really is like nothing is what it seems. Everything's mm. fucking, everything's a conspiracy. It's just like, all right, guys, I don't give a fuck. Like, that's a shitty thing that happened. That's a country at war. ISIS are maybe like, seems like a strange target. I don't claim to understand ISIS. A Russia, I thought Russia were potentially funding like Hamas, which is Muslim. So wouldn't they be on the same side? Because in the proxy war that is allegedly going yeah, on, in uh, I don't think Hamas are fundamentalist Muslims. I think they're just they just want 
the Zionists out of their country, whereas ISIS are fundamentalists. They want Sharia law, sort of different kind of ideologies. Yeah. It's a fucking weird one, man. Like, it's just strange to... I don't know. If I was a terrorist, I'd be like, maybe Russia's not the best one. I wouldn't be poking that big brown bear. No shit. And also, it does seem like terrorism when it comes to that sort of stuff. They really do work in kind of like cells where it's like, you know, like... Uh, what? Da, 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 da. <laughs> they just like rock up and do their fucking shit and then they're like hold up remember the guy that did the sydney one at the lint chocolate thing yeah and a part of his uh demands were that they bring him with the proper flag because yeah. he brought the wrong one yeah it's like oh you're a fucking idiot yeah you're a knob <laughs> yeah and the sniper that just fucking wouldn't shoot yeah that was a schmozzle that wasn't it, it was that one dude fucking rushed him got took a shotgun to the chest and mm -hmm. died and then everyone else kind of rushed i remember watching that one live and we were all group chatting about it mm. and people just kept escaping people were just like fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like go 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 go, go. <laughs> but yeah if you're gonna sniper sniper yeah you would think that a sniper in that position would be itching to pull the trigger they train their whole fucking career for that moment i watched like a 60 minutes thing on it and they were like they fully hurt him they hate him. No, they had him. They they had him oh, yeah. in the sights. Dead and, rights, yeah. Yeah. Pretty fucking crazy, man. That was the only one that I really saw. Oh, there was the other ones in Melbourne. The dudes were just mowing people down with their cars. That shit was fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's the Russia crazy. one, they, they, it, at first I've I seen it and it was like three people are dead. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Mm. And then today it was like 130 are dead. Oh, I heard 60. I heard 130 this Jesus morning. Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe it's yeah, so yesterday, yeah. They got busy. They did get busy. I hope terrorism's not making a comeback, man. That shit sucks. Did you watch any of the videos of it? Nah, like I said, like I've kind of been off Twitter because I'm like... You know your boy, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it? Didn't GoPros deliver. or something? Didn't deliver. No? What were you hoping for? Just I was hoping for the some, theater, some explosive... Oh, GoPro on the head. Dude, kind of. I can't fuck with the GoPro on the head. That guy, the, the New church, Zealand one, church, I was like, yeah. holy shit. I saw like a little bit of that. I was like, no. Dude, I watched that start to finish. That was pretty harrowing, to be honest. Mowed that poor woman down and then ran her over with the car. Yeah, that shit sucks. That guy was a piece of shit. Yeah, for real. I wonder what he's doing now. Oh, yeah, they got, they got him. He didn't die, right? No, yeah, he's in jail. But um, I, that's kind of the last I've heard of it. Yeah, some 4chan shit. Mm. It's pretty wild. I think people, I think on a long enough time frame, like you're going to get some nuts that do some crazy shit and they're just like motivated by, it's like mm. school shooting. It's like that shit's not like, like how do you fucking, they, they obviously need to come up with a way to try and stop that shit. I wonder if he set out to write a manifesto or whether he just wrote some shit down. Like when does something you've written become a manifesto? Yeah. Do you have to do mass murder for a piece of writing to become a manifesto? Or could you and I just write a manifesto? You just start writing and then you're like, ooh, this is pretty good. What, what, what defines a manifesto? I think it's post. Like death. It's like I said, yeah, it's like my fucking journal if I decided to go out and murder a bunch of people and they found my journal, that would be a manifesto, right? But if I just go about my business and journal. don't kill people, it's like, don't read my diary. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you wrote your manifesto in like a little Polly Pocket pink diary. <laughs> That'd be pretty sick. The crazy shit was, um, do you remember the, the cop in LA that went nuts and just hunted like, other cops down said he got he got uh he got booted from the force and he was like it was racist dawner christopher dawner i don't remember it oh dude it was crazy he was like a trained soldier and then he just went out and just started taking out like is he the one that hid in the car boot no nah, no nah, that guy was crazy yeah but this dude just waged war on the lapd and he was just going around like killing cops and saying you know like this is a racist corrupt fucking organization Not i know wrong. i'm gonna die <laughs> but this is what i'm doing and it was kind of like the hero people could kind of get behind but he fucked it up because the first person he killed 
was like the daughter of the police commissioner and she wasn't a cop or anything. I think That's, she was like in the WNBA or something. That seems short-sighted. Yeah, and it's like, oh, dude, we can't fucking... I can't back him down, bro. Here. He fucked up. But they called him. They, they caught up with him at Big Bear and he was like hauled up in a um, cabin and that shit was crazy because the audio got released of it. Oh, yeah. And there was a lot of like uh, hollering going on by the police and they, they set it on fire. What do you mean, hooting and hollering? Like some... Some real fucking like uh Kill him. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, a lot of southern accents in the fucking California for some reason. And That's they, weird. Yeah, they fucking burnt the thing down with him inside. So you probably don't want to fuck with it's I mean when I was living in badass. LA, everyone was like LAPD is the biggest gang. Like they're yeah. terrifying. I think yeah. New York are pretty fucking hardcore as well. Yeah. Well, New York used to, I was like watching this this Netflix show. Um, that's just come out about like New York homicide, I think it's called or something. And from everything I've seen, like New York used to be like in the seventies and eighties, it was hectic. Like, it was super yeah. dangerous. Yeah, very. And then through the nineties and two thousands, it was like Giuliani cleaned it, it up. Yeah, but they did all that stop and search laws stop and, and frisk. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that might have it. been after Giuliani. He know. was the one that brought that. Oh, in, was it? Sure. Yeah. But yeah, they cleaned the city up apparently and like it was a nice place to live. But yeah. now it seems like it's like Devolving pretty out again. of control. But I was listening to that. Like I was listening to Protect Our Parks the other day and they were saying that like Ari Shafir doesn't say that much. It's too intelligent. But he was saying, they were like, oh, is there much anti-Semitism? Because he's like the penultimate Jew, right? Mm. Like he looks like the pictures. Yes. Um, he And he was like, it's not real. Because all this shit is on the internet. Like they're like, oh, there's anti-Semitism is running riot and everyone hates this. He's like, I fucking walk around like I'm like a super well-known Jewish person. He's like, I get coffee, I do this and that. I've got a bunch of Jewish friends. He goes, no one is saying shit to us. Because if you listen to the internet, it sounds like the world's fucking on fire. It's a race war. Yeah. That's kind of why I'm fucking backing off Twitter because I'm like, all these perceptions of what is going on in the world and you get kind of, I, it happened during Black Lives Matter. I remember I was like, because that shit was just wild and it was like happening in places that I had be, been, like, you know, it was on Fairfax. There's like police cars on fire and stuff. And you're like, oh my God, what's going on? You're on Twitter, like on YouTube as well, watching this shit go down. And you're like, oh my God, this is fucking nuts. There's nothing to do because we're in lockdown. And I was like, ah, I can switch this off because I'm not fucking there. And then it happens with like, you know, all the border stuff and I'm watching like Channel 5, all the stuff we were talking about recently, I'm like, ah, I don't, fuck off. Mm. It's like, it sucks that that's happening to you guys, but I can't do shit about it. Very true. I'm just gonna fucking try and live my life. I have tried to um, remove some of that negative, potentially negative influence from my existence as well. My, um, I eliminated like, 50% of my followings on Instagram, no watches, no luxury shit, very minimal um, women of unscrupulous backgrounds. It's pretty fucking PG. Yep, you sanitized your feed. I sanitized it. It's batshit boring now, mm -hmm. but that's good, I think. Yeah, because you're less likely just to log on to it. Exactly. Or at least when you log on to it, it doesn't take your attention away and like you like. And it doesn't fuck? leave me feeling like uh, I need to do fucking something different, you know, like I'm not enough. Yeah, so to yeah. Speak. And that's like we're full adults. Yeah, grown ups. Imagine what it's like for children. Yeah, it's it must be crazy. That's why they're dressing up as fucking dogs and sticking tower tail butt plugs. Yeah. They're probably not though. Oh, they could That's be. probably on the internet. They it's like could. I said, like it's like <laughs> yeah. at the gym the other day, because I'm pretty heavily autistic at the gym. And there was a girl that was on a bit of equipment that I was wanted to use. And it was like 10 PM. And I was, I'd done everything else I had to do. And I was like, I've got to use that bit you of equipment. You stared at her voraciously. And she was like on her phone on it. And I don't care. It wasn't like I wasn't mad at it, mm. but I, sort of walked past and then walked around. And then I was like, oh, I'll use another bit of equipment. And then I'm still moving because I don't want to just be standing still in there. And then I kind of circled again. And then on the third circle of the gym, I was like, 
shit, if this girl's filming me, like this will come across as if I'm fucking yeah. sharking. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then sharking. I was like, I was like, but she fucking isn't using it. Well, it's no, no. It's like, is that shit even fucking real? Like, how much of this shit is just set up to oh, yeah, yeah. to enrage people on Twitter? Mm. People are like, oh, this will get engagement. Because the one thing that fucking the because I was looking into reels and all that shit we were talking about the other day and like how to get how to make reels and stuff for, for various different things because I was thinking of it from a business point of view and now like the only thing that comes to gets fed to me ad wise right now is just like I can get you a million views on every video mm. da, 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 this and that and it's like well, what the fuck is that going to achieve mm. like they're really targeting that at like people and it's like you need to make sure your hook is good and the best hook is probably like this guy was staring at me in the gym and like people, so people just fucking fabricate these things. Like the number of things I see that I'm like, this is definitely fabricated. Mm. Like dumb shit, we spoke about it before where like someone just happens to be filming and something crazy will happen. Like people putting their pets in precarious positions yeah. and then being like, oh, look how silly it is. It's like, you drugged your fucking cat. Yeah. Like I have a cat. They don't act like that. Yeah. That one's on ketamine. Yeah. <laughs> it's listening to fucking German techno. <laughs> My favorite new trend is the one that you sent me the other day, though. Which is what? Which is fake babies. Oh. Fake babies is a, such a... you got to appreciate the ingenuity of OnlyFans models. I was going to save that for the page. Nah, fuck it. Bro, What's that a... shocked me because I was scrolling through my Explore page and saw titties. Full nipple out. And I was like, that's not fucking meant to be here. So I did a little bit of digging. Research, if you will. Yeah. Which You're just involves looking at many sets more of boobs. But it turns out these OnlyFans girls have found a loophole in the fucking Instagram terms of conditions. Yep. And that is you can show your titty on the internet as long as you're breastfeeding. This chick was groping herself suggestively, holding a completely fake Fisher and Paykel baby. <laughs> Fisher and Paykel, that's a fridge. Fisher Price baby. <laughs> <laughs> essentially cosplaying being a mum. It was insane. Yep, just pushing a fake baby's head to her titty. I like how she also like dotted the nipple with some like white yeah. milk looking substance. Like I appreciate the length she's gone to, but that doesn't look real. It is hilarious. I thought just found it so funny. I was like, that's just, in you got to appreciate the ingenuity. They're like, all right, this platform's fully left leaning and it wants to allow this. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So they're just like, here's the baby. Here's my OnlyFans link. Shoot, he's going to shoot. Get paid. The funniest one is on Twitter, like every single thing is just like, it will pop up and it says, oh, the, um, you know, Bobby Altoff leak check comments. Yeah. You know, in comments, and it's just thousands of girls just being like, my leaks are better. Yeah. And it's just like hardcore porn. Yeah. And you're like, holy fucking shit. Yep. I used to scroll that at work, eh? <laughs> well, this is insane. And I'm getting paid to do this. <laughs> People don't stand a chance, man. If I was 16 with a phone. Do you realize how hard it was to see a set of tits on the internet when you were 16 years old? Yep. You had to battle for that. And when you got a set, you were like, God damn, I'm going to save this image. The craziest thing about it was the images loaded line by line. I would, for some and reason, a... I remember it's called table loading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that. And you had the home personal computer that was like in the living room. Yeah. And you're like we had a stealthily trying to watch this. You're like <laughs> pressing it and it's loading slowly and you're like ears are pricked up you're like can i hear a car coming in <laughs> uh, and you're like trying to delete the history you find out what cookies are you hope you find that shit out before your mom finds out what cookies are no shit i, I think cookies are undid me a few times though. my mom shamed me man shamed kelly, you kelly brook oh. kelly brook was like an english i remember like, fhm model and i was just looking at some titties and i didn't clear the history and she came down on me for it. She's like, you've been looking at boobs. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was a child. How am I not meant to do that? Exactly. It's natural. Should have been celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Scott was looking at tits. 
<laughs> what did you think of them? <laughs> That's not going to be good either. <laughs> if you're a parent and you catch your kid and it's over the age of 15 looking at pornography, it's on you to pretend you didn't see that. I think that is so true. <laughs> It's got to be, dude. For the sake of him and you. Yep. You don't want to have that convo. No. He obviously knows what he's doing. Accept it. Let him live. And remember what you were. Like, especially our generation is like, remember who you were. Exactly. Don't try and put, like, unrealistic fucking expectations on your kids. Yeah. They're jerking off. Let him spoof. Let it happen. Let's do what my dad did. Just go, don't do it in public. <laughs> <laughs> Astute advice yeah. too. He's like, everyone does it. It's just like shitting. Just inside. <laughs> everyone knows everyone does it. You don't really talk about it. You don't do it in public. <laughs> Scott, get back inside. Yeah. I told you once. Good. It's, it's a perfect timing because I was ready to <laughs> I was ready to hit the streets. <laughs> Take this out to nature. <laughs> On that uh, note, it's probably a good time to uh, sign switch, off. Switch to the page. Everyone, switch over to the Patreon if you are that way inclined. Before we go, should we um, have a look at the Patreon and potentially the merch sales and give a few people a shout out for yeah. supporting the podcast? Because we haven't done that for quite some time. We haven't. Patreon. I know there's been a few sales going on, so um, thank you all for uh, rocking with Scott's new designs. Perry, Lyndon, James, supporting the boys. Thank you very much, brother. And Lewis McCarthy. They're the two new newbies. Fuck yeah. Yoni. I don't know if we shouted out Dan Gavin. He was um, a yeah, couple of weeks we ago did. as well. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys. We want 52 members at the moment, which is pretty sick. Holy shit. And Mike commented that uh, I think that was the guy that where I was like, I couldn't figure out if it was a guy or a girl. In the, from the tiny photo and it's oh, MYKE. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he commented on the um he, he commented on one of the Patreons the other day and he was like, the shout out made my day. So I assume he is in fact a man. Shout out made my night laughing. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we also got a video sent to us which there was some stipulations on it. We'll talk about it on the Patreon. Oh. Where a couple of uh, people we knew procured a bovine. Oh, that one. And that was the most hilarious video I've seen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, merch as well. So some people got on the merch. Shopify. We've reduced the price of the hoods as well down to 99. They yeah. were 129. They're super high quality. I think that's a bargain. 129 was a good price coming into winter as well man's needs to be cozy dylan heil coming through with the t-shirt purchase rodrigo costa rod rod getting himself a college hoodie and the chain t oof kelly Pittman always supporting with the t kev henry buying from freaking canada what an absolute g they are the most recent sales so we've had yeah we had eight sales last week Awesome. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you so much, guys. For forking out. And um, put pressure on Scott to release Josh's designed, a <laughs> now new unreleased tea that uh, I did as per requested by our followers. Lean on me, guys. Um, yeah, keep commenting and follow the YouTube if you haven't already. Shit's starting to pop off a little bit. Had yeah. a few people come at us. Dude, yeah. if you're a Patreon member as well and you want to fucking do some extra work, just drop a comment on the YouTube. Even if it's like, hey, Scott, you look like a fucking giraffe. Or, hey, Josh, you got a head like a bash crab. Feel free because that just bumps the algo and then we can have a little argument with you. You know what was sick was a comment that someone deleted, which I'd screenshotted. Oh, yes. What a pussy deleting it. You didn't delete it, did you? No, absolutely not. Yeah, because I certainly didn't. It was um, po very poorly written. It was, and he kind of went into like a little bit of a personal rant. Yeah, it where I was like, "Oh, yeah, you're freaking mental." Very messy. It felt very messy. So we'd done a little clip of um, me saying that the new Guy Ritchie thing's really good, and that everything else he'd done for a while sucked, and the 
caption was, Guy Ritchie doesn't suck anymore. And someone has written, what do you mean anymore? The credibility here is what? Head trauma and looking like a drowned ch chihuahua with the down sufferer. So I look like a drowned ch chihuahua, you look like a down sufferer, and you pushed me under the water with your tattooed hands. I look like my eyes are fighting over which way to look, and your partner looks like he's been sweating all day about the contents of his hard drive. <laughs> Do I look like a kitty fiddler? <laughs> I don't think so. I didn't think so Do either. I look like I have downs? Didn't I have downs and you nah. were the drag oh, yeah. chihuahua? Oh yeah, you're the downs with, so you are you have downs and- A potential pedophile. A potential pedophile. I you, look like a drowned chihuahua with a lazy eye. Wonky eyes. Look, I uh, respect it's, it. Yeah, it's not, maybe. I respect it. Yeah, um, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Some people yeah. think I'm very attractive. He needs, uh, <laughs> just, if you're gonna come at the Kings, try a little bit harder and at least structure your sentences better. You yeah, know don't people, delete your shit. Uh, you know when people use like multiple periods and stuff and multiple uh, spaces where they shouldn't be, you know they're not stable. I think he's come back, because I'd said, oh, that's oddly specific. And, and then his comeback was like, um, he said, I've been fighting people against like, creeps like you my whole life. And it was like, oh, you got touched and you got fucking, you got some anger that's being spewed out on the internet. Yeah, directed at the wrong people, my friend. Yeah, and I was like. Directed towards Guy Ritchie, the maker of terrible movies. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be clear, the Gentleman movie was great. It was awesome. But it was the other ones that I had struggled with. All right, we're off. We're yep. off to the Patreon. See um, you on the other side. Thanks, guys. Bye. Lovegoodpodcast.com. Lovegoodpodcast.com. Lovegoodpodcast.com.